Perfect timing, just as we managed to get the tech working with the slides. OK, so I'm here to talk about a project and also where I work at Ushahidi, uh, a project called Open Design. And this is about how designers, particularly of all different kinds, can start to contribute more to open source. So a little bit about me. My name is Errol, it's pronounced uh, Errol. My pronouns, if you want to use my pronouns in any social media, are they, them, theirs. I'm a designer at Ushahidi, I'm the lead design now. I've been doing design for around 10 years, more recently UX, uh, design specifically. And um, I've got seven years, uh, seven years in the humanitarian or NGO sector and around two years in open source, so not very long in open source. And a little bit about Ushahidi, if you're not familiar with what Ushahidi do. So Ushahidi are a humanitarian NGO tech company that is based in Kenya and all of the workers are remote, so we're spread across the world. And we make mostly open source software for human rights activists, and different humanitarian purposes. So the examples that you can see on the screen here on the left-hand side is our first product, which was a data collection platform that was made for the citizens of Kenya when they were having their first democratic election back in 2007, 2008. So what they were experiencing in the rural areas of Kenya was things from influencing voting uh, so intimidation at polling stations, right through to violence, so people holding guns at polling stations and telling people that they need to vote a particular way, otherwise something might happen. And what the founders of Ushahidi really wanted to do was create this data collection platform that was for the citizens to report in lots of different ways what was happening around them. So it uses SMS, Twitter, different, different kinds of SMS systems, basically anything that you can pull in data-wise via, via an API. What it will do is take that information, collect it in a platform, and you can also use it to map things on a visual, visual geographic map. And the example that you can see on the screen is actually another use of Ushahidi's data collection platform, which is actually for natural disasters and crisis. So this was a series of different volunteer groups in Nepal when the earthquakes happened. They used the data collection platform Ushahidi, the open source platform, to map what was happening, where people needed resources after the earthquake, what kinds of things people were experiencing, and to co coordinate that relief effort after crisis. The other uh, tool you can see on the screen is a crisis communication tool that's recently gone open source. So it was closed source for a, few, a fair few years while it was in development, and it's just gone open source. And this is a tool that takes all the different communication methods, like text messaging, Slack, uh, WhatsApp, email, and the in-app messaging, to understand whether people are OK in a crisis. And this is actually another, the story behind this is really interesting. It was around a terrorist attack that happened in Nairobi. If you're interested in the background, please come and ask me afterwards. But we don't really have time to go into the backstory at the moment. So I'm here to speak about Open Design. So Open Design is a collaboration project between Ushahidi as an open source tool, open source organization that makes humanitarian stuff, Adobe, who are our partners and funders, and a global design agency called Designer that has offices around the world. And we got together uh, in spring last year, and we started to ask ourselves the question of why aren't there many designers contributing to open source? I'm a designer in open source, and I don't see many people like me involved in open source projects. And when I was trying to find other people to collaborate with on my projects, I was wondering who to look to as an example. And what we wanted to create was this open design project where the focus was designers collaborating and contributing to humanitarian-related OSS, 
So any open source project that has a kind of for good purpose, and a lot of open source projects have a for good purpose by the nature of being open source. At these gatherings, so trying to gather designers together to really quickly understand what OSS is. We did two events to test whether this would work. We did one in Berlin in 2018 and one in Seattle earlier this year to see whether people would come, whether designers were interested in what open source is. And they were really successful, but they weren't successful in some other ways. And we thought, this is where we can improve things with a dedicated project. So we know that designers really want to work on projects for good, things that have a humanitarian purpose, a, a goal that gives back to the community. But when you open up a challenge gathering to designers, that is so open-ended to say, let's do good with this open source tool. They start creating things that could never be attached to specific issues within a repo. So a lot of what we call uh, design fiction or vaporware. So really interesting design solutions for very real problems, but not at all implementable by the development teams within a year, two years, three years, even five years. So what we discovered is that some of the things that we needed to do to improve this project were like making a more specific challenge, having things tied very, very closely to what is actually happening in the development repo and the product management cycle of things. So we started to really learn what we needed to do to push this project forward. So we started to discover some of the answers to these questions. This question, so why aren't there many designers contributing to, or design contributions to open source? And there's a few of the reasons now that I'll go through, but there's so many more reasons than I have time for right now. But the first one is that most designers that aren't part of an OSS company, organization, or product, don't have a clue what open source is. If you go to a design event as a design professional and say open source, you'll have puzzled faces staring back at you. <laughs> and then you have to launch into the explanation of what open source is. If designers know what open source is, the idea that they predominantly live on GitHub is then what scares them. What <laughs> I like that you're laughing. Um, when you talk to people that don't have, not just designers, but researchers, product managers, people that do socials, basically any function that is really crucial to tech products being really great for users, but that don't live a lot of their lives on GitHub professionally, get really scared of this. They think about, oh, what do I need to do about cloning this repo? What is cloning a repo? Do you know what? I won't participate. I won't contribute. I'll leave that to the people that know how to do that. And that's a barrier. To be serious, it's a real barrier because designers want to contribute, but they hear this, they see that this is where it's living, and they need help. They need help getting over this hurdle. So another reason that when you say OSS to you designers, is that when you explain what OSS is and what contributing to open source is, to designers it sounds something like something very familiar, this work for free. So very early in designers' careers, we often get asked to do a logo for free, for your portfolio, for the exposure, because there's a lot of misconceptions that the design function is easy or that it's enjoyable because it's creative. It's a job like any other job. It requires deep learned skills and it's not something that is necessarily <laughs> easy to give away for free. But when you talk about open source at a surface level with designers, they kind of go, oh, so you want me to do design work for free? And it's like, no, the, the reason about contributing to open source is this idea of participation, 
contributing to a greater good of a, of a product and that you are an active part of this, this um, tool, this system, and that what you do matters. It's not just working for free. So you have to go that extra step to explain all the great reasons why developers contribute to open source, but within the design language and avoid it sounding like work for free. And one of the really functional ones, which is one of the great conversations that we're having at Ushahidi, we're having with Adobe, but also with Sketch, and more recently Figma, is how design tooling, design files, how we create our designs, the version control within that is next to non-existent. So within our softwares, unlike with development where you do a branch of code, you may uh, push that code to get reviewed and it gets merged. With design files, it's not as easy. It's really difficult to know exactly what somebody's changed if you're collaborating on a file. It requires a much more lengthy documentation process than perhaps development has at the moment. So those are a few, only a few of the reasons that we have discovered over the last year why designers aren't contributing to OSS as actively as people that code do, or people that write documentation. But what are we doing within the Open Design Project to try and solve these problems? It's the real, the real question. So one of the things that we're doing is connecting people all around the world that are doing similar work people that are trying to encourage design contributions to OSS or to humanitarian work. And these are some of the people, I highly recommend you check them out. The Hague Hacks works out of The Hague in the Netherlands doing human rights design thinking workshops. So the part before you have a product, they're open sourcing design contributions for that. You've got open source design, .net, which is a community of designers interested in open source where they can talk on forums about what the challenges are and come to a sense of community which is largely absent within the regular open source community. You've got global virtual design sprints doing things that the Hague Hacks are doing but remotely across borders. Adobe, who are really supporting our efforts in open design. Design for Bharat, which is an India-specific project about civic design. You've got design at the global agency that are really dedicated to bringing for-profit and commercial and corporate designers into the world of open source. So not just the people that are already interested, but those that are working in the corporate offices that have time that they might want to spend contributing to open source. And then Open IDEO, who's doing great work around, again, humanitarian challenge work. The other thing that we're doing is we've created an open methodology for anyone to use to take this methodology and replicate across different countries, depending on all the different things that make different countries, cities, towns unique as far as their design communities go. We've got a workshop framework as well. When you're running these in-person design workshops around an OSS tool, we've got a guide on how we think you can do that best, that you can change, that you can adapt, that you can pull down a branch, and you can merge back into our open source repo here. We're doing different pilot events. So after the two events that we did that tested whether this was worth pursuing, we started doing really in-depth events to deeply investigate whether this is going to this framework works and testing it. So the first one we did was in uh, Bangalore, Bengaluru in India, which was uh, two weeks ago. We're doing one here in Taipei, which is great. Uh, we're planning one for Kenya in the capital Nairobi and one in the UK in London. The one in Bangalore focused on Ushahidi's 10.4 tool, which is the crisis communication tool. And it really focused heavily on what the flooding was like when the southwest of the, of the continent flooded really heavily in 2018 and 2019. And what open source design could do to try and solve these specific problems of flooding for that open source tool. 
Here in Taipei, we'll be looking at typhoons and the effect that it has on farmers. And this is what we're doing tomorrow in the workshop on that same crisis communication tool. In Nairobi, we'll be looking at the effect of terrorist attacks and how designers can design better solutions for OSS around terrorist attacks. And in London, we're looking at how designers can design effective solutions for when things like the Grenfell Tower fires happened, again, for our crisis tools. So if you're an OSS project, I have a list of things that you can do to encourage design contribution to your own projects. I have so many different recommendations that I've given at different FOSS events now to, to things as simple as creating really specific labels in your repos for UX design, UI design, research, user testing, user scripts, to design documentation. Don't leave the designers out of your documentation. Have a think about how you want to engage with them. Even a small line in your readme that says, we welcome design con contributions, here's how to get in touch with us, is the first step to inviting designers into your OSS projects. And really what the aim of the Open Design Project is, it boils down to these, these few statements. So increase contribution, but then sustain it. Make it a sustainable community of designers that can help each other um, collaborate on these different open source projects. Support the community. Make sure that that community knows where they can go when they're having a problem. The community of open source designers isn't as big as the community of open source coders. We really need to build this community up uh, with a really strong focus on supporting each other and learning from each other and sharing skills. And build understanding. This is the biggest thing that I do with this project often, is go to different design communities and talk about OSS as kind of like an ambassador. And go to OSS communities and talk about design as an ambassador. So I sort of sit between these two worlds over here as a designer and ho over here in the OSS world, being like, design can be really, really useful for OSS, and OSS is a great way to get involved in projects that you might never have thought to get involved in. So I'm sort of here doing this dance between the two worlds, saying each one is as great as the other and that can really help each other. And that's all I have to say about open design at the moment. So thank you very much. If you're interested in finding out more information on the Open Design Project, please take a look at our repo. Please take a look at our, our website. And please come along to the workshop if you've signed up. Thank you.